name is Rebecca. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Evil Twin Two. You can find show notes at owlknitwithyou.blogspot.com, and you can find our Ravelry group if you search for Owl Knit With You. How you guys doing? How have you been? I have had an awesome and weird week. Like it's been good, but it's been different. So I'm excited to tell you guys about that. Um, first off, new fronds. We have one new frond, which is better than the new fronds. She's so great, she must have to have an episode all to herself. Her name is Being Brienne. Welcome, Being Brienne. She is Brienne from Missouri. So, welcome, welcome. If you would like me to introduce you to everyone else on the podcast, or everyone else who watches the podcast, because you're not really on the episode with me. Anyway, just go to the I'll Knit With You Ravelry group and introduce yourself in the introduction thread. And... Then I will say, you say something like, oh my gosh, my name is such and such, I live in such and town. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, I've been there. Or, oh my gosh, you have pretty projects in your, in your project page. I don't know, whatever. Um, so it's new. How have you guys been? What have you been up to? I just had my first ever, that I can't remember on record, ever, 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 work week of working during the day. I've always worked night side in all of my jobs because I worked at a movie theater, that's night side. I worked for like a campus snack place that served snacks like after the dining hall closed, that's evening stuff. News station, evening stuff, still working with the news station, but now I get off and there's sunlight and the stores are open and I don't know what to do with myself. So tomorrow I'm going to go see a matinee or Monday movie for cheaper than it would be during the weekend because I can do that now. It's going to be crazy. I'm super excited about it. Um, this should be my schedule from here on out. So that's kind of awesome. It also means that I should start recording when I get off work on Fridays. But this Friday, I had stuff to do. And I'll talk to you about that in a second. So I spent most of my week being like, holy crap, I'm off early. What should I do? Everything's open. Something should be going on. Let's go do something. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And... <laughs> That included hanging out with friends one night until like our restaurant closed we just sat there and talked for so long. It included um, going with my family to see, to visit my grandma and go ahead, have dinner with her, which they do during the week sometimes, but I don't get to do that because I work evenings and so I've never gotten to go. Um, it included getting to go to stores and stuff like that because I was already off work. So that's nice. Um, it also meant that by the time the weekend got here, I didn't feel like I had to cram all my free time stuff into Saturday and Sunday. So that meant I finally had to go to that Black Sheep Fiber Guild that they have in Southern Illinois. That I've been trying to make it to since Easter, which is ridiculous. So, um, this weekend they had a day where they just dyed yarns. I'm going to zoom out because this is going to be a lot of things to show you that are very large. So, I did a lot of dyeing yesterday. Yes, because yesterday was Saturday. Um, I bought two skeins of yarn, and now I don't have those tags with me, of course. But I'm sure I've linked it in the show notes. How clever of me. Show notes. I'll do it with you. Blogspot.com. You can check it out there. Um, I talked to my boyfriend, Andrew, and I was like, Andrew, I'm going to knit you a pair of socks for Christmas. I have not knit you any socks. You deserve some socks. What color yarn would you want? He goes, what about Joker color yarn? And so I dyed this yarn. It's not as purple as I was going to think. It's a little more pink in some spots, but it is purple and green. And I dyed it straight half and half down the skein so that hopefully um, we might get some subtle striping or some half striping or something. So this one is just, you know, half and half. Um, I haven't re-skeined anything, obviously, because this was just yesterday. So there's still a little bit wet even. So that is going on. I hand-painted this one. Tons of fun. And then um, I bought a second skein of sock yarn just to play with, just for myself, just to put some fun colors into because I have fun colors. Um, and it's no fun if you're dyeing stuff and you don't get to keep what you're dyeing. You have to gift it all away. So this one is the one I made. It has a red, a green, a teal because uh, maybe I like teal just a little bit, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, kind of a navy blue teal, a little bit like frozen colors, some more green. Uh, I think one of those was supposed to be yellow, but 
it got blended with the blue, so I don't really care. Um, but I think it turned out awesome. I really like how this scheme out turned this scheme turned out as well. So fun. So um, dyeing yarn, super success. I uh, loved it a lot. I hope to do it again. It does seem like something that you're going to want to take a whole day to do because we did a lot of hand painting of dye and, and kettle dyes. And I mean, since it was a group, they had like a whole. We went to someone's house and um, hung out in her garage and. There were dye pots everywhere and the little bottles of dye that you could squirt in your yarn and soak it in and there was all the tools you would need. Um, I just brought my fiber. I had bought dye from like Joann's that was like fabric dye. But um, we ended up using acid dyes that they had already purchased so it was awesome and it turned out great. And it's definitely something I want to do again. It definitely is something I could not do in my apartment. So I might have to go to Andrew's house or something if I plan on doing that, that big of scale of things. So the one huge thing that I did is with, when I got my wheel, it came with one pound of white wool. I don't know what kind of cheap it's from, so don't ask me because I don't know. And the wool was white, and now it is not. It is all dyed up. Look at it, it's so pretty. So we put green dye in a um, dye pot, like a giant kettle basically. Um, and I put this in first, and we slowly added more fiber until we got to this in. And um, to make it look like this, this shape, um, I basically did like a giant single crochet with my hand and then did it one more time because otherwise it's just like strings and strings and strings and fiber roving forever. So um, this I can hold up for you guys, which is what I was going for. Um, so it should just unravel pretty quickly so that when I'm ready to spin with it, I can. Um, and now it's all unraveling. But you can see this end is so much darker then this end, and it is the same dye pot, same fiber, same everything, just one was put in and let soak longer. So um, the way it was explained to me, when you put wool in a dye pot, there's only so much dye to go around even though there's more water than dye. So the stuff you put in first will drink it all up, and then as it goes, you get less and less and less color. So this was a really cool way to play with this, and everyone was like, oh my gosh, you're going to have to show us pictures and stuff and you're not spinning. And I was like, won't I be spinning it with you guys? Come on, for real. And they were like, oh my gosh. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it was so much fun because I don't really have any fiber friends in this area. I have like two. Um, but that's it. That's not a whole like huge massive group. So it was awesome hanging out in a huge massive group. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, come to this knit night we have. And oh my gosh, have you heard about this thing? And oh my gosh, did you know there's a fiber festival happening in a couple months in Massac County? And I was like, oh my gosh, so much fiber stuff. <laughs> I love it. So um, this I'm hoping to spin up and ply with itself. I'm thinking it'd be really fun to fractal spin it. Or not fractal spin it, since I'm not really sure what fractal spinning is yet. I'm still working on figuring that out. Um... I think it's when you take the yarn and separate it in half. And then you spin one half and you take the other half and split it into a hundred million tiny strands and you spin those all, you know, this dye is coming off of my hands. I've already washed this once, but it was, it's kind of hard to wash a pound of wool. Anyway, I would like to spin it so that maybe in a two ply split down the middle, maybe as a three ply that has been chained, although that would be massive to go on any one bobbin. All my bobbin are regular size, so I might need to buy new bobbins. I don't know. I think that this is going to provide quite a bit of difficulty. I might have to do two skeins, like cut my losses at some point on a bobbin. So we'll just see how it goes. So I think it's going to turn out awesome. It's a lot of wool. I'm not going to. I don't have plans to spin this like ASAP or anything like that. But it is awesome and fun, and I love it. So oh, good, so cool. So epic, successful. Dying day, everything I did I love, the thing was disappointing, everything is fantastic. Um, I didn't really go with like, I have to make this and dye that. Because even Andrew's sock yarn was like, I'll try it, if it doesn't work, I can keep it for myself. So, um, but everything turned out great. It's still just a little bit damp. I had a hangover in my shower rack until I had to use that. So, um, epic successful dying day. Scoop over there. Oh, I have something across the room. So that brings us to today. Um, we went to a new burger place in town that has like gourmet burgers. Which is funny because I've just been talking about my Nashville trip and all their gourmet burgers. What? 
And this works a lot the same way where you can choose what type of patty you have and all that sort of stuff. And I got a burger called The King and it had bacon and peanut butter on it. But it was like unsweetened peanut butter. So it was like just gyro and dense that had been blended with some oil to get a paste. Um, it was really, really good. We also had bacon. I like to order stuff with bacon on it. We also had some sort of bacon, brown sugar, bourbon, sweet potato fries. What? And my other burger had, um, it was rolled in coffee grounds before they grilled it. It wasn't as good. It kind of just tastes like burnt coffee, which should have seen that one coming. But that's okay. <laughs> it was still an excellent uh, thing, and you can order them as full size or sliders, so it was a lot of fun. Um, looking forward to going back there again soon. My boyfriend really liked it, but he didn't like the burger he got. So, uh, but he had tried bites of mutton, so I think we're gonna go back and try some other flavors. It's really fun and exciting. I'm not a huge burger person, and you can order it with chicken instead, but not on the sliders. So I think next time I'll go back and get the peanut butter, the king again, with chicken as the main meat. It is almost like Indian food, or no, Thai food, where they use like peanut and stuff, right? Delicious. So, um, that's my blather for today. Let's move on to blobbins. Blobbins is where I talk about spinning and stuff like that. Um, it is break month for the Harry Potter Shay knit. Harry Potter Shay? Potter Shay, I think Potter Shay is why I'm so confused. Harry Potter Knit Crochet House Cup, which I only talk about all the time. Um, and in the meantime, since I don't get points for anything I do right now, I'm kind of just floundering and finishing things up and playing around, which is kind of chill and nice compared to how I normally craft, which is full speed ahead. So, um, I spundle spun this itty bitty scheme. So itty bitty, I'm gonna have to zoom in, so hold on. So this is my itty bitty scheme. It is from some fibered wool that I had gotten at the at a local fiber festival that was not very big. Um, it's got blues and yellows and greens, and it was super super easy. This is just a, a really simple two ply, so um, and it's only about 28, 35 yards, something like that. And I spend a little spin it on this little little doodad. I got this for two dollars at the fiber festival. I I like it better than the other one I had. The whirl is smaller, which I don't like as much, but the weight of it, and I don't know, something about this one just makes me really happy. So, together, this has been created. The original fiber looked, or I guess it still does, um, well no, because it's spun, so it doesn't. Looks like this, this very neon -y green with blues and yellow, and this made me feel a little 80s and happy. So, aww, very lovely. So that's the spinning that I've been doing lately. Um, once the Harry Potter Shay Knit Crochet House Cup gets back on, I will um, be spinning some of those mashups I was showing you with the art bat and the mega braids of stuff. And oh my gosh, I have so many things to spin. I don't have a lot of fiber, I just feel like I've got a lot of plants, <laughs> which is great. So let's talk about whips. Whips. Um, I need a sock. I don't have a sock form. Where's my sock form? One second. I showed you guys this sock last week. I've been knitting. Whoa. I've been knitting it on my size zero needles. Um, they are nine inch needles. And when I was doing it, I was like, I used to usually knit in one and a half, but I'm jumping down to size zero because they didn't have any size ones in stock. The size zero fits fantastically. Um, I even showed it off when we were dyeing stuff on Saturday. I was like, look at this tiny needle. And they're all like, oh, it's so cute. Is that really hard to knit with? But I was like, it's a little hard to knit with. So these are my socks for 10. Um, this little blue piece of yarn shows where I was at last week. Let me get some zooming going on so you guys can really see what I'm talking about. So these are my socks for 10. They have this really cool detail up the side. There is a right and a left foot. This is my left foot sock. So um, it is awesome. This yarn is not supposed to be self-striping, but it really is self-striping. Uh, it just happened to turn out that way. So there's also this really great, um, let me turn this so you can see, really great uh, ribbing type pattern up the center, which is fun. I'm trying to get this all on one side of this sock. You know, I'll just hold it up for you. So here's the sock, so you can see it. I 
love, love, love this pattern. It looks complex, but once you read it, you're just like, this is genius. I'm going to remember this. It's so simple. Um, but let me talk to you about this thing right here. This heel is driving me crazy. I've only done it three times now. This damn heel. This dang heel. You didn't hear me say that. Um, it is an afterthought heel. I'm, why am I talking to you guys so close? You just like my face. What's up, how's it going? How about I zoom out for you? Ah. My shoulders. Okay, this heel is driving me crazy, um, but it's also because I am crazy, which is why it is crazy. I decided I knit it as a tube sock, no heel, okay? And I decided afterthought heels makes total sense. They're just toes on the heel of your foot. I can just make that up. I don't even buy a pattern for that. I can just stick it in where I think it's right, put in my heel, and I knit it just like I would a toe. It looked great. Um, so this is the toe of my sock. This is the heel of my sock. One of these things is much bigger and flatter than the other. Heel, toe. Um, and that's because my heels are bigger than my toes. Da doy. So um, when I knit the heel, the heel sat um, about an inch too early on my foot. So. If this is my foot, the heel needs to sit here, and it was right here, so it wasn't comfortable. It wasn't terribly uncomfortable, but frankly, I wanted it to fit correctly because I'm knitting socks, and knitting socks is not cheap. And if I wanted socks that were just going to fit, I'd go to Walmart, but if I want socks that are like gourmet socks that I have made and fit wonderfully and are for my feet, it, I'm going to get it right. So I picked up stitches on one side, picked up stitches on the other side, Unraveled to those parts and re knit, but this time what I did is I just knit for a while. Like this part is all just knit, no decreasing, no increasing, just knit. Because uh, I needed it to be farther away, both, both the back of my foot and the sole of my foot. So, sole of my foot, back of my foot. I needed more length both ways, right? So then I started doing decreases really quick, so every other row, is, which I mean, that's logical, but I didn't like say, oh, every three rows I'll decrease and that'll make it get there. So um, this heel fits great now. It just didn't when I started. And I thought I could try blocking it out, but honestly, if you have to use the word block it out, then you probably should have fixed it in the first place. Because I'm, I'm the worst one about not fixing my stuff. But at the end of the day, I mean, this sock yarn was what, 15 bucks? 15 bucks could buy me a lot of well-fitting socks that are totally generic, but I want my socks. Socks for 10. Beautiful yarn. So they deserve to be done right. I deserve good socks, Dad Gummit. Dad Gummit. Um, so this is how far I knit from last time, and you're like, Rebecca, that's not that far. I did three heels since I've seen you, okay? Three heels. This is plenty far. The sock got done, okay? Now obviously I'm knitting another sock. Which I have to show you. I don't just knit single socks. Anymore. I used to. They used to be really bad habit of mine. Oh, that's... I thought there was something red on my door. It is the red record circle on the camera. It's right here for me. And I was like, what is on my door? Nothing's on my door? I'm a crazy person. Um, so, my second pair of socks is not very far along. My second sock from the pair is not very far along. It's just a little toe. Um, there's not much to see because you can see the pattern much better on that one. In my rush to get it onto my 9 inch cirques, I had been doing the pattern wrong while I was at the dye, um, dye and yarn day. But it's okay because I only went like two rounds, so I just picked that out really quick. And I thought, I deserve good socks. I deserve socks that are correct. Um, I've been very adamant about this lately. So um, I just have one itty sock. And this is a Java Pearl Design, who is CC from um, Geeky Girls Knit. And this Sock design is fantastic. Um, once I'm done with this one, I will probably buy another one of her sock design patterns because it looks fantastic. And it's so stinking easy. Um, and I knit Cookie A socks, which are beautiful, but are a pain in the butt because everything's charted. And I feel like this looks like those, 
but it's a billion times easier because you can remember what it is, remember the pattern or kind of give yourself clues like this pattern has kind of the clue that like when this thing happens this thing is also happening and those continue to happen and that's cool um so it looks as intricate as a cookie a sock but with the simplicity of a vanilla sock like seriously all day every day so um she's currently doing a whole set of dr who inspired socks for a sock it's like one of those monthly i just forgot every word i was trying to say um but her patterns will be released in six months for those so i'm eagerly awaiting january when i can buy more doctor who inspired sock patterns from cc almond um travel pro designs plug 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 she's so awesome so ah, love it want to do it better faster stronger that punk okay speaking of whips the infamous never the infamous never ending whip that i'm always in the middle of a row no shoot I was going to finish this before I started the podcast, but I got so excited to talk to you guys that I didn't. <laughs> that makes sense, right? Um, my guinea cardigan. I know, you're like, don't sound upset about it, Rebecca. <laughs> you're the one knitting it. I'm upset. I'm actually really, really, really happy. I was, let's say, lackluster about this cardigan until this week. I will tell you why. This week, I started shoulder decreases, and right when I was, I here I'm right, easily distracted, what's going on, bird, squirrel, um, it looks really big, but it's not done yet, it probably is really big, honestly, it's getting so comfortable, I don't even care, back patterns, while, yeah, while I talk to you about it, so, um, this has been going on forever, this sweater, I swear, forever, and forever for me is like four months. This is why I've been going on forever. Um, so, I really thought that I had outgrown the pattern size that I picked, which is always a good feeling. Nope. Um, I thought I made my sleeves too short. I was sure of it. And I have an internet pin pal who was like, hey, I haven't seen your sweater in a while. Are you going to work on that song for the next podcast? And I was like, ugh, yes, I will. The gross, whatever. And so... I've been knitting on it and I tried it on and it was right at the shoulders and I looked at my pattern and I was like, oh, this is what I do next. And if I do that, then this will be sitting here. And then I realized everything was going to fit perfectly. There was angels singing, there was beams of light, like psh, glorious, oh, everything was majestic and wonderful. Singing songs of loveliness about the sweater. I was really excited, to put it mildly. Um, I think I messaged about 12 people about how excited for the sweater I am. So, yeah, I guess I thought I wrote correctly. How excited for this sweater that I am. Yeah. Um, so, the shoulders fit, because I just started doing decreases for the shoulders. The sleeves are long enough. I posted a picture on Instagram, which probably made no sense to anybody else, but it was like my sleeves like right past my wrist, like, oh my gosh, my sleeves fit. And you're probably like, this is just a picture of a cuff of a sleeve. I don't know what that means. Because it's really hard to take a picture of yourself in a sweater. And hopefully next week, even if it's not done, I'll be able to try it on for you guys and show you how well my sweater is going to fit. Because the shoulders are happening right now. My little bitty shoulders. And um, then I was still need to do a neckband and a button band, and I think I need to order more yarn, which is not good. I should have ordered like two more balls of this, and I might even do like a sixth color. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, a sixth color that's like right above this, maybe a really light green. But I don't know how much lighter than this green that you could get. I think that's wasabi green. To my project page if you really want to know but um it is knit picks it is what is it it is swish dk so we'll see i mean knit picks makes more yarn knit picks makes more colors that's all gonna be good colors are the last thing that i'm worried about i'm just excited to almost have a cardigan for winter it'll be such good timing you don't understand this is awesome 
really pumped about it. Just, just a little bit. So that's my biggest excitement. Do I have a photos for you this week? I dyed a bunch of stuff, but I spun up a little bit of yarn. Uh, I finished half a sock set, so that's exciting. But you know what I do have for you this week that I don't normally have? <gasps> it's a review. That also has a contest. Get excited! Alright, so for those of you out there who have iPads or smartphones or... I'm not sure what else this works on. It is my very favorite knitting app that ever existed. Um, it is called Knit Companion. I'm going to show it to you. Just wait. I'm just going to tell you about it first. It's called Knit Companion. And um, it takes care of your entire pattern from, I mean, all of it. So what I do when I get a pattern from Ravelry is I download it on my iPad and I open it in this program because you can like open in iBooks you can open in whatever and then from there I um, take that pattern and you can say this is a chart and select this a chart and say it's got this many rows and this many stitches and then as you go through the chart it highlights the row that you're on which is awesome and then if I put down that thing and then come back to it a year later it's still like hey this is the row that you're on this is where you are save your spot for eternity or infinity or whatever. And um, you can even buy patterns that are pre-separated for you from them. You can do it if, if you're like, this app is too much. You can do it um, as a subscription to try it out for a little while. And the giveaway will be for a year-long subscription to Knit Companion. There will be a thread called I Need a Knit Companion. Right? Because it's kind of a Doctor Who joke, kind of a knitting joke, mostly a giveaway. Um, and I need you to tell me how this would help you in your knitting world. I contacted Knit Companion and was like, listen, I think your product is sweet awesome. And I am, sorry, I've got cooling issues today. And I'm a Knit Companion at Evangelist. <laughs> Everyone needs to use this stupid thing that can. Um, and so I was like, I want to give away one. Do you guys do that? Is there like a thing I can do to give things away? Do I need to buy my own copy of it to give away? And they're like, that's awesome. This sounds awesome. We're going to give you a year subscription to give away. Boom. So let's get, let's stop talking. Time for the meat. The way I add a pattern to Knit Companion, it's really simple. I find the pattern I'm looking for and I find where the download option is. So this one says available for free. I click on the PDF. It's going to open that in a whole new page. And where it says open in iBooks, you can choose open in. And I open in Niche Companion, which will download it right into the, pro the software. So I say I want to start a new project with that. Boom. There we go. I can see both pages of the PDF, so I'm going to select all because I want all of that information. Now, if you had downloaded a PDF that's like a whole book, you might only want two or three pages that are just the sweater or the hat or the scarf out of that book that you want to make. Make sense? So I'm going to hit next. Um, this project name, it's going to be called the Molly Hat. Now, quick start, we'll just put everything in a PDF with little markers that you can drag around. Um, if you turn off Quick Start, it will not have anything in your project because it wants you to add in um, what's a chart, what text you want. So I'm going to show you that way because the other one's just a PDF with markers. Turn that off. Hit Create Project. Sometimes it takes a couple seconds to set up because it's going through all the information and you see I have nothing in here. There's nothing going on. So I'm going to click Set Up. I'm going to click plus a piece. That's going to just be text this time because I don't really know what's going on in this pattern. Um, I'm going to say stuff from the first page. That's where we're going to start. Um, we're going to call this text one because we need to have a name in here. Text one. So then you just select what you need. 
it looks like all the information on this page is just size information, materials, gauge, and some terms. So I don't actually need that. So I'm going to go back and pick a different page and say text one. So for this one, since it is all text, I'm just going to drag and select what I need. Super easy. And then hit save. And it says, is this what you want? Do you want to add something to it? Because like if there's several pages like this, I could add an image and just do the same process and then tell it where I want to go. The videos on their website make it even easier. But that's all I want, so I'm just going to go back to Setup Project and the Molly Hat. So now when I see the Molly Hat thing, there is one page that says Text 1 and all of this information. And I can drag this down to what I want. There are row counters over here that I can um, reset or if they were really high I can have them go back down by one. All of these little up and down are drawers so if there was a key I could put the key in here. In fact let's do that for those um, for that key they had. So I'm going to say I need a new key. Call this just the key one. I'm not very inventive with my namings. So I'm going to copy this info right here. And I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to go back to my setup project. So now if I need to see, okay, this says SSK. What's an SSK, y'all? Just pull this up. And I can drag through it like it's another thing altogether until I find what I need. So SSK was up here. SSK is slip one stitch, then slip the next. Insert left needle into front loops. It's really, really easy to read. It's huge, right? And the best part is, is unlike other PDFs, you can zoom. So I do need both fingers for this one. Go down. Oh, duh. You just tap it. So I can zoom in on anything that I need to. And look, totally clear because it's from PDF. I can also zoom out. This is really handy with charts. So let me show you a charted pattern that I like. It's the Tiger Eyes Scarf. I've made like two of them since I started podcasting with you guys. So PDFs. Let's find the Tiger Eyes Scarf. These are all the things that are downloaded onto my iPad. I can delete any of them and they'll be saved over my Dropbox. And I'll show you more about that in a second. So Tiger Eye Scarf has a chart, has a key for the chart. So let's get that started. New project. Now just to show you what this looks like, I am um, gonna let it do a quick start. I'm gonna call this Tiger Eyes with no real vowels. Cause why not? So this is how it looks if you do the quick start. It's just going to have all the pages of the PDF all here. Okay? But now I'm going to go to setup and it's like, hold on, hold on. We're on quick start mode. Do you want to leave quick start mode so you can convert this to a full project? I'm going to say, heck yes, convert that thing. So it already has page one for me, which is not something I want now because that's the first page of the PDF. So I'm going to drag this to the right or hold it. So, so it's already got page one, which I don't want. So I'm going to quickly drag to the right. My little edit bar shows up. I'm going to hit edit, delete piece, delete piece. And that just takes it out of what we see. The PDF is all still there. And if you want to see your PDF, oh shoot, is there more pieces? What am I missing? You can click on PDF. It'll show me my PDF. So I'm going to add my key first from this page. Key one. And same thing, just going to select what I need. Now let's say I, I over-selected or under-selected. You can click on one of these and drag those around to kind of like really get in there. And that's more important with charts, which I'll show you here right now. Let's save that. That looks awesome. I'm going to go back to Setup Project. Now I'm going to add a piece. It's a chart from this one, and I'm going to call it Chart. One. It's all just drag and click and just telling you what to do. So I want this one right here. Now I really want to narrow this down. So I'm going to wiggle these sides in so it is right on top. Because anything else that it sees, it's going to think that it's part of a chart. And I don't really want these to be part of my chart. So, 
once you get to this part, it's really easy. You just need to put in the numbers that you see. Except, um, <clears throat> most charts have the front and the back row listed every time. This one only has it listed once. So even though it says this is 16 rows, it's really only... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine rows total. So there are only nine visible rows. There may be more rows in the project, but this one only has nine visible rows. Number of stitches um, doesn't matter for me as much on this one. It might matter to you for different projects. So you might want to have that counted up, or sometimes it'll show you across the bottom how many. The bottom row is one, and we're going to increment by one. We're not going to skip two or three rows at a time. So I'm going to save that. Go back to my project. And now when I go through the chart, it does go up a row. So now you see that little bit of white up there? That's where I didn't crop it quite correctly. So, ta-da, super easy to read. Now, if I'm having a problem with like say, okay, I can see this, but maybe you've got a much bigger chart and you can't quite tell what's going on. You can zoom in like you can on anything else. So you can really see what's going on in your chart. And we can close this so we have a little bit more room. Ta -da. That's the best part about this is if I then leave, ooh, too small. If I then leave this project and go to something else, so I can go to my projects and see what I've been working on. Look at all this awesome stuff. And go back, this is the same pattern, but it's something that I was doing for something else. For someone else, sorry. Um, I didn't do the chart, I just was doing it PDF style so I could drag this around. It showed me where I stopped. I was on row 10, but I can drag this around and keep going. So that's how it looks in PDF. Now if I go back to my other one, it shows me exactly where I left off on that one. So then I can go up a row or whatever. And if I go to the top row and I haven't told us to do anything differently, it's going to go down to the bottom row. It's just going to go on repeat. Another really nice thing about this program is the Dropbox built-in function, which is a free online storage, cloud storage stuff. So if I go to projects and I go to drop project, drop box projects, I can see other stuff that I have put in there before. So stuff that I have packed up and exported are in there, which is really nice because then you feel like it's stored in there forever. The other thing is, is if you don't want all this stuff on your iPad, you can do the same for your PDFs. So if you find something online and you're not on your iPad to open it up with that, you can save it to a folder on your Dropbox. Um, this is for the stuff that I have in it yet. I have a, a used folder, so I need to move some of my stuff into there now that it's done. Um, but it's a nice way to keep track of projects you do, projects you want to do. And I can't change anything in my Dropbox from here, but I can download stuff to my drop to my uh, Knit Companion on my iPad. It's the same way we did it in Ravelry. So if I decided I wanted this lace cap, I just hit tap on it and then hit import. And I'll see a little loading bar and it says, hey, it's here. So now if I go over here, lace, oh, it's right here. Lace cap is right here, so I can see it, and um, it's over there lickety split, and that all depends on your internet speed too. But all in all, I think Knit Companion is about my number one knitting program that I use. I went through about six or seven different knitting programs. Um, before I landed on this one, and I absolutely love it. So again, if you would like to win a copy of this, go ahead and head over to the group and tell me what knit, how Knit Companion would help you in your daily life. Like, how would it help you read charts? Would it help you remember where you're at? Would it help you knit multiple projects and that you'd always have a marker where you left? It's pretty handy. Um... So even though I'm off camera, I will tell you this, my five favorite things this week are dyeing with new friends, um, dyeing yarn that is, and fiber, going to see my grandma on a Friday, getting off work during daylight hours, which is pretty fantastic. Um, my boyfriend Andrew listened to me rattle on about all the dyeing stuff and knitting stuff I did this week. And Knit Companion is probably one of, seriously, one of my favorites. I know I kind of sound like an ad, but they did not come to me. I actually went to them. 
and um, we're not getting sponsored by them or anything like that. It's just a really handy program that I think everyone I've shown it to has been pretty impressed. The only thing that's not so impressive is it does cost quite a few pennies. Um, I think the full version is 15 and you can download a trial to use with limited ability for free. You can also do a subscription if you don't want to pay that huge chunk of thing at once and just subscribe for a couple months to see if you even like the full functionality. Um, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but it's nothing a couple of YouTube videos can get you through. You guys are knitters and crocheters and spinners and weavers and dyers. Do not tell me you cannot learn something new because you guys are dang impressive. Um, if you can knit, I think you can use this program. It's really not hard. Now, the contest will be exclusive to iPad users because I had to give them specifics so they could know what information to send me. So if you have an iPad and you would like to try Knit Companion, please tell me why you think Knit Companion would help you. And on that note, I hope you all have a great, great week. Um, Foley is also a free pattern. I hope you have a great week and I've enjoyed talking to you. And remember, wherever you are, whatever app you're using, I'll it with you.